Okay, uh, Desert Bear Hawk fans, we're back for the third installment out here in the sweatshop. We talked about how we got to this point, which is the um, basically the cutting pattern for the one quarter short ribs. I have one for one eighth in full size. So what happens next is remember that aluminum blank that we cut out, roughly this size with these two tooling holes in it. Well, now. That, without any other holes or any other shapes cut in, it gets sandwiched along with five other ones, because they all have the same tooling holes, in a stack, gets sandwiched between these two blocks like this. And then they get pinned with the pins. Now, earlier I said uh, this, this pattern is a quarter short. The rib I'm using is one of my extra ribs. And um, I cut all the extras to be full size because I can always make long shorter, but I can't make short longer, as it were. It's a little wisdom my grandma taught me. Um, so basically what you do is you sandwich the five. And I'm, it's being incredibly difficult, but the idea being is you sandwich the five of these and you don't actually pin them you would use a bolt like so. And you run the bolt up through there and up through there and then you can see that we're a quarter inch long on this rib because it's a quarter inch short block. But anyways, so now you've got all this excess material hanging out here and you got this no, no holes in it. You can't get your hands through there, the whole deal. So what I do is I take the laminate trimmer bit and I put it in my router table, and then I just run it along there using the top as a guide, and it just it just mills this material right off, perfectly flush with the form pattern. And I'm making five of these at a time, five rib lengths at a time. Um, the center holes, uh, I should back up a little bit and say I did drill a pilot hole into each rib length so I could get this bit up through, and then it just follows the circle and routes out the holes. That's how I make, that's how we get to this to this point here, a rib blank. Um, a couple little side things to talk about. Um, just for people who don't know a lot about tools, you woodworking guys are going to know all about this. Um, this pattern moves flat on a router table. You want it to be flat and smooth, but you've got a bolt head sticking out right here. So how do you, how do you manage that? Well, you got to recess the hole that the bolt fits down into recessed hole and we do that with what's called a Forzner bit and this is a giant one this is like uh, one and three eighths but I use a three quarter Forzner bit and it just goes in your drill press and turns down and it makes a perfectly shaped hole with a flush face not a not a beveled face like you get from a drill bit and it's obviously not a whole saw because it's not just cutting the edge but it's cutting out all the material Forzner bit and that allows our bolts, our tooling bolts, to sit flush and we can move this thing around on the table. So, make 48 of those ribs, just like I described, depending on what station they go at. They'll either be full, 1 8 or 1 quarter short on the router table. Aluminum dust everywhere. It looks like, yeah, it looks like silver snow in the garage. Vacuum cleaners plugged up. People are running for their lives, but that's basically it. It makes a ton of noise, but it's not too bad. It's not as loud as a jet engine, so it's all good. So that's the tools that I use to cut the, uh, the blanks that we have here. All right, so I can put them off to the side. I don't need them anymore. All right, the next thing that I had to make was another set of tools so I could form the rib. So... Like I talked about earlier, I think I talked about, we got the full size form block and the 1 8 backer. And basically what you do is you sandwich the material between them and then you use a mallet to drive over this flange. First problem I ran into was I couldn't get down in here to set the radius of that flange because of this block, so I had to make yet another tool and more sawdust. 
So, I use my full size. Well, actually, I use my 1 8 reduced for this particular tool because I wanted it to be 1 8 reduced. But the tooling pins are the tooling pins. The holes are always in the same spot for everyone. And I made this backer that I 45'd on the router table to give some relief so I could get the hammer down in there and not hang up on the edge. And that worked pretty, pretty good. Let me just uh, stick some pins in here so you can see. That worked pretty good. And imagine that this is all like so. But I still couldn't quite get down in there to set that radius the way I wanted. So the next thing I had to do was come up with a way to do that. And it was pretty easy. I went over to my scrap bin and I got a piece of scrap MDF. And now I can hold that right in there, smack the top of it with my hammer, move it along as I do, and it'll set that edge and start to curve that right on over. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the tools that I use to set the initial flange. Now, one thing you'll notice on this block right here is that there's these black lines I've drawn all along here. This, each one of these lines represents where the rivet between the skin that sits on top of this and this rivet is going to go, right, right where these lines are. The reason that's important is because when I flute the rib, flute, 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 I don't want to flute it where there's going to be a rivet because that just, that's, that doesn't work. So, for obvious reasons. So, before I pull the part out, it's beat over, but it's not 100% it's not right. Matter of fact, it's actually pretty, pretty ugly at that point. But I, what I do is I mark each one of those black lines so I know where not to flute the rib. So flute, day of flute, you keep talking about flute. Well, these are flutes, like I showed earlier, and what they do is they shrink the material because the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Well, obviously this line isn't straight, it's got a half moon in it. So I'm sucking up material. And the reason I need to do that is, is that when I flange over this flange right here, this way, because of this curve of this rib, I'm creating, a, I'm creating a compound curve. I'm flanging it over, and the material is going over, but because it's curved, it's kind of working in on itself. Well, the material is not going to mysteriously go away, so the, it does the only thing it can do, and it ends up bowing the rib like that. And you can't even get a 90 in it just by hitting it because it won't go. It, it just, it'll, if you smash this down to 90, this side will pop out. If you smash this back down to 90, this side will pop out. It's like, you know, it's like a whack-a-mole. You can't get the dang thing over 90. So what you have to do is get it as best you can, pull it off, and then you take these homemade fluting pliers, which are nothing more than a pair of pliers that I ground the, the serrations off of, drilled a quarter inch hole in through the nose, and then I taped in a quarter inch pin, where are my pins? I taped in a one inch by quarter inch pin, just like that, on the one side, and that pin pushes the aluminum into the half moon quarter inch depression on the other side and creates these flutes. I will demonstrate. Non fluted, just put them in the pliers, give them a squeeze, fluted. Now you notice when I did that, the material kinked up. And if I continue to flute along here, I could actually flute this piece right into a complete circle if I had enough of it. The reason that this is arcing up is because I'm shrinking this edge. And when you shrink it, this point and this point are getting closer together and they're not going this way so they have to curve around. That works to an advantage because when we're arc the wrong direction, we can take the fluting pliers, take up the material, and that allows us to continue to bend overnight. So, now I've got this thing fluted, but these flanges aren't at 90, they're at 45s. So I need to put them back in a tool and continue the process. So, the next tool that I made after tearing my hair out for several hours was this one right here. And this one right here is the same as this one right here in physical size around the very edge. But you can see that I've milled some 
half moon holes in it for the flutes to rest on because if I didn't, if I tried to continue to flute or continue to bend this piece around this block, as soon as I started mashing it against the side, I'd just pound those flutes back out of there and it would be two steps forward and three steps back and then the gun would go off and it would be a nasty scene. So, what I did is I made this form block which has the same identical shape as the original then I milled in some holes for the flutes to sit into. That was all well and good. Put everything together start beating on it with a hammer to pound them flat. The problem is is that they were pounding flat against a 90 degree edge and anyone who's ever worked with sheet metal knows that there's spring back. So you pound it flat it springs back. You pound it flat it springs back. So you have to pound it past flat so when it springs back it springs back to flat. So I took this board right here and I and I don't know if you can see it but I milled in a five degree relief all the way around on the sanding table. So I basically set the sanding table up at an angle, I shoved this thing in here and I sanded it right until the sander got right up to this edge. Now I've got a five degree relief. Now when I pound it, I pound it past 90 to 95 degrees and it springs back to 90. And that allows me to get the rib flat and into this condition right here. Grab one. like so. Notice that this one doesn't have the center holes fluted yet. So this is what you're going for. So I figured out that <clears throat> if I over fluted the piece and actually bowed it up the wrong way, it was bowed this way and I over bowed it the other way, but keep in mind my flanges are at 45, by the time I beat my flanges flat to 90, pop this thing out of the, out of the uh, form, the flanges are perfectly 90 and I don't have any bows. If I had a little bit of a bow in it this way, I would just take these fluting pliers and either flute it some more to pull the bow out or I would take a pair of, uh, I would take a, a pair of pliers and I would smash these flutes a little bit flat to bow it the other direction depending on which way I need to move it. Well I got pretty good at it by the time I did the 40th one and then I only had four more to go but I could pretty much pop them out and they'd be flat. So. That takes us to this step right here.